you should make a another YouTube channel called Bangs. Yeah, or like what what rhymes with bangs? Bangs. Bangs. Bangs and bangs. Like a morbid Yeah, like, morbid bang, bang care channel. channel. Yeah. This is not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Even though I'm a mortician in my 30s with no children of my own, kids love me. Do you even know any kids? Yeah, I know kids. I know kids. Uh, uh, Jackson, I know, I know him. Uh, uh, Penelope, Madison, uh, t t t Teresa. I think you're making those names up. Yes. The times that I do meet kids is when I go on book tour. And I want to be honest, their questions are usually better than the adult's questions. And that is why I wrote my new book, Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs, which is all questions from 100% ethically sourced, organic, free-range children. And to celebrate that, I've invited two real children to a tea party today with me. The first one I actually do know. Her name is Lila. She's the daughter of my funeral arranger, and she thinks I'm nice. I swear. Welcome, Lila, real life child, to my tea party. Would you like a uh, beverage? Perhaps an orange juice or lemonade? I would like a lemonade. A lemonade. Bring the child a lemonade. I'm sticking my pinky out. Cheersy, cheersy. <laughs> There we go, excellent. So, do you know what we're here to talk about today? Dead bodies. Dead bodies, yes. Hi, Fauna, welcome to the tea party. Can I offer you a beverage, tea, uh, limeade? Mother! Fauna wants limeade. Yes, yes. Okay, so I hear you have some questions for me. Oh, yes. First question is, how do mummies stay mummified? It depends on the mummy, but I think the number one thing that all mummies need is no moisture. When a body is wet or it's humid or there's a lot of moisture, that activates the bacteria. Oh. And the bacteria is what chomps away at the body and decomposes it or putrefies it. Okay. How do you feel about decomposition for your well, body? Well, um... I actually think I want a natural burial when I die. Although my mom has shown me a picture of someone that was preserved in a position where um, they're wearing sunglasses, sitting with a cigarette, and just holding some beer like super cool like this. So I said to my mom, I either want to be preserved like that or I want to have a natural burial. If you're going to preserve me, make me something cool. Yeah. Make me wearing a great hat, paint me in gold, you know, cover me in yeah. jewels, do something with me that's that's more interesting. When you die, how does it look like? When you're alive, you have control over the muscles in your eyes and in your mouth. So do that with me now. Open your eyes and open your mouth. So we have control over that, right? We can do like my rah rah. But when you die, you lose those controls of your muscles. So when you see a dead body, usually their eyes are open and their mouth are open. So I'm gonna do one, you ready? It's sort of like this. So what your mom and I do is we go and we close the mouth on the body and we close the eyes on the body so they look a little more peaceful for the family when they come in, so more like. When a prisoner dies, what do they do with their body? Because, like, do they have their own private graveyard? One of my most memorable moments from my very first job 10 years ago was when I got, oh yeah, please, uh, please enjoy some cakes while I talk to you about prisoner bodies. When I went to, when I had my first job, I drove two hours outside of San Francisco to go to this prison in the middle of nowhere. And they let me in through the back and I picked up the body of a prisoner and took it away to cremate it. So nowadays, a lot of prisons just have kind of a normal, you go pick up the body, just like I would pick up a body from a hospital or pick up a body from a nursing home, except it happens to be a prison. Does the body bleed all over when you die? There's lots of different ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. 
So if you die at home in your bed and it's totally calm, you're not gonna be bleeding everywhere. You're gonna look just like you did 10 minutes ago when you were still alive. But like sometimes, when you're exactly, like when you're sleeping. But sometimes if the death is more intense or sudden, yeah, you can bleed when you die. And sometimes that's the cause of why people die is because they bleed too much. Why do people lie to their kids about death? I don't know. Your mom doesn't lie to you about death. No. And you're fine. Yeah, I'm fine. You're clearly but fine. Why do people do that? My thought on that is always that it's the parents that are uncomfortable, not the kid. So mm -hmm. the kid is like, tell me about that mummy, tell me about that dead bird, tell me what happened to grandma. And then it's the parents who are like, mm, I'm uncomfortable. So if a kid is asking me an honest question, that would mean I have to give an honest answer. And that makes me too squigged out. Mm. Which is a shame because kids deserve an honest answer. Yeah. Actually, I think the more honest my mom is about life and death and everything in general, the better. Because then I have more knowledge about it. And the more I know, the more comfortable I can be. Do you cremate the bodies? You know, I used to. I used to cremate all the bodies, but now I'm sort of more like sitting at the desk doing all the finances. When you when you keep on doing all the things like computer, your finger will fall off. All of your fingers. You're right. You're right, actually. Cremating <laughs> bodies are better because then if you just type all the time, your fingers will cut will fall off. You are reading me for existential filth right now, Lila. <laughs> you have identified the main issue in my life and dragged it across the internet. I think all the time how much I wish my job was still just cremating bodies because it makes you feel alive. It makes you feel powerful here. Like, like you're helping people all the time. This is like a therapy session. I probably shouldn't be using a six-year-old child is my therapist here today, but uh, you're totally right. Do we want to do some Play-Doh and markers? Yes! It's that time of the tea party. Play-Doh dance. Bring in the Play-Doh! Bring in the markers! Lila's unhappy! Mother, bring us the morbid Play-Doh. It's time for morbid Play-Doh. Markers, markers, markers. On set. Oh. I'm so sorry, it's so hard to find good help. Are you gonna do Play-Doh or are you gonna do markers? Well, you know, I'm the rock star so we can do... We can do both, that's... A woman truly can have it all. I'm gonna draw what I think death looks like. <laughs> oh, you hum when you're drawing too? Yeah. That's the thing I do, I go. <laughs> My mom said that she actually might want um, to have her organs delivered to science and mm -hmm. labs um, to discover new things about the human body. Which is a really fantastic thing to do. And you can donate those organs and then still have a natural burial after that. You're right. Yeah, kind so of one like, thing... um, how Egyptian mummies get all of their organs and stuff taken out. Does your heart break when someone dies? I think your heart does break, and I think it should break. I think it's wrong that we should say that we're not supposed to be unhappy or we're not supposed to feel emotion when we die. Especially as a woman, never let anybody tell you not to feel emotions and not to feel sad and not to feel all your feelings. So if your heart breaks when someone dies or your heart breaks for any reason, feel your feelings. Mm -hmm. What happens to the gas in your body? after you die. The gas in your body. Yeah. Okay. My, this is a question from my dad, and my mom said that it was a fart question. A fart question. It is a fart question. Yeah, it is a fart question, but that's totally fine. We love fart questions yeah. around here, around this, uh, around this table. Do you know where the gas in your body comes from when you die? I want to say food. Yeah, it's food, but what it also is, is the bacteria, remember when the mummies, we talked about the bacteria that's eating you inside? Yeah. So many bacteria are inside you, chomp, chomp, chomping away. And when they're chomping away inside of you, they are releasing gas inside you. So the bacteria are farting inside you. And that's where the gas builds up in your stomach. And that's why your stomach swells a couple days after death. Okay. And then the body releases gas 
or farts out the bacteria farts from inside the body. Okay. Sorry, I made your head too big. Sorry. Is that me? <laughs> no, my head is huge. I think that's just the right size. This is like life. We're here like to color. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. This is like life. We're here to color. What happens to your body when you die? My favorite part about my job is that there are so many things that you can do with your body when you die. You can turn them into a tree, you can cremate them, you can do a water cremation, you can you put can the turn whole them to a tree. You can turn them to a tree, you can throw the whole body off a boat, you can put the body in the ground, you can shoot parts of your ashes into space. There's so many cool things that you can do with your body. What happens to your pets? Like, what if you don't have a family member that can take them in? And what if you're not married? Oh no, what if you're not married? This is a really good reason to have a will because you can put in your will exactly where you want your pets to go. So say that your next of kin is your ungrateful son who you don't like and wouldn't take good care of Mr. Fluffy. Yeah. Then you can put in your will that you want your neighbor Sandra, who you love and who loves Mr. Fluffy and who always gives him treats when she walks by, you can say, I want Mr. Fluffy to go to Sandra, my neighbor. And that's why it's important to have a will to make sure that your pets or your kids or your stuff or your Play-Doh goes to exactly the person that you want it to go to. Okay. Lila needs a black marker. <laughs> How is she to draw my banks? Do we not give her the tools she requires for success? <gasps> and I get a crown. Ear, 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 ear. Bow, 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 bow. What? A... <laughs> it's a head. It's very surrealist. Thank you, Miss Lila, for coming to my tea party. Did you have a good time? Yes, I had a great time. To death. To death. <laughs> this video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. I 50s sci-fi movie green. Ooh. Very like <laughs> Adventure will teach you survival. And that is something school will not teach you. Surrealist head.